Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for tonight is Luke 2, verse 4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Here ends the reading of our text. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Philip Brooks, who wrote O Little Town of Bethlehem, was probably the most famous preacher of the 19th century in America. Shoot, his first volume of sermons, which went on sale in 1878, sold more than 200,000 copies. He was a top seller. He was also the pastor of Philadelphia's Holy Trinity Episcopal Church during the dark days of the Civil War. Week after week, more and more of the women came to church dressed in black, mourning a husband or a son who had fallen in that war. Soldiers returned and came back to church with arms and legs amputated. Each of them looked to Brooks to hear a message of hope, of comfort, of encouragement. But those dark days were dragging down his spirit as well. At last, the terrible war was over. Abraham Lincoln was reelected, and in his inaugural address, Lincoln spoke of a healing of the nation with the words, with malice toward none, with charity towards all, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Later that same year, Lincoln was assassinated. Even though Brooks was not Lincoln's pastor, and even though he felt ill-equipped to do so, he was asked, to deliver the message at his funeral. Somehow Brooks did find words to fit that day, but seeing the president dead just further drained the man. It felt like the dark days would never end. Exhausted, he sit, simply didn't have the energy to keep fulfilling his duties as a pastor. In an attempt to rediscover and restore his faith, Brooks took a sabbatical and left the pul pulpit. He took a trip to the Holy Land, and that trip dramatically changed him and renewed him. So he returned to Philadelphia with new energy. But that is how he happened to be in Jerusalem in 1865, on Christmas Eve. While he was there, he felt an urge to get away from the hundreds of other pilgrims who had journeyed to the Holy Land for the holidays. And though he was warned that there were thieves about and if he were to take a trip by himself, he might fall victim to them, nonetheless, the preacher borrowed a horse on Christmas Eve day and rode off into the countryside. As he rode across that desolate and unforgiving area, he had many peaceful hours where he was alone with his thoughts. And as he studied the land, which had changed very little since the days of the Bible. For Brooks, Christmas Eve was a wonderful time of prayer and meditation. At dusk, he suddenly sensed an awe. Under a clear sky, the first stars were just beginning to emerge as he rode into the still tiny little village of Bethlehem. He recalled the story of the birth of his Savior, and by being present in the place in which Jesus was born, was able to add vivid details to the story that he knew so well. The great speaker was a 
speechless as he considered the heavenly king born in such modest surroundings. Brooks felt, he felt as if the spirit of the first Christmas was there. He would later tell his family and friends that the experience was so overpowering that it would forever be singing in his soul. But it would take him three years before he could put the words of that song down in a poem. Then his church music organist wrote the music for it on Christmas Eve, printed it on a sheet of paper, and it quickly became a Christmas carol favorite in Philadelphia. Six years later, it was published in a music collection called The Church Court, and by the time Brooks died, O Little Town of Bethlehem was a favorite Christmas carol around the world. When we sing O Little Town of Bethlehem, we can almost feel the awe of Brooks as he remembers the birth of Christ in such humble surroundings. Joseph and Mary had traveled to Bethlehem in accordance with the decree from Caesar. But it was more than that. It was in harmony with the revealed will of God, as we heard read earlier from Micah. He had foretold the birth of the Messiah in the little town of Bethlehem centuries earlier. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, knew that the child of Mary was coming into this world of sin to bring peace between us and God, and by extension, between those who receive him still. The Messiah would fulfill the promise made to Abraham. He would deliver us from our great, greatest enemies of sin, death, and the devil. He would enable us to know God as our loving Father and not as an angry judge. He would allow us to serve God as his forgiven, righteous people. These precious gifts become part of us. It is that special first Christmas spirit that Brooks felt over a hundred years ago. It is the spirit that God imparts to human hearts. St. Paul wrote about it in our epistle lesson from Ephesians. There Paul prays that the Ephesians may grow spiritually to have an ever deeper understanding of Christianity, having a stronger faith and exercising it. This happens through the gospel. Brooks correctly set his carol at nighttime. After all, the shepherds were keeping watch over their flock at night. It probably was a clear starlit night because most of the nights in that part of the world are clear and starlit. The birth of Christ at night, though, gives extra meaning to the prophecy from Zechariah in Luke. He, he wrote that Jesus came to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our fight, feet into the way of peace. Yes, indeed, in the dark street shineth the everlasting light. It was the light of God come in flesh. It was the light of God's grace in Christ Jesus. When the herald angel spoke to the shepherds, he left no doubt as to whom the shepherds should seek in Bethlehem. The angel said, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. They were to look for the Christ, who is the Savior. The shepherds would have understood immediately this tiny baby was the culmination of Old Testament promises. He would be the one who redeems God's people from their sins. He would set at liberty those who are captive to sin, death, and the devil. He would restore a right relationship with God and all who receive him. There, in the silent streets of Bethlehem, while mortals slept, God's greatest gift was given. 
after three years of preaching Christmas sermons and trying to come up with a way to express his feelings from that Christmas Eve, Brooks finally was able to capture his experience in the words of a simple poem. His organist came up with the perfect tune for those words. Through the words and music, we too come to the little town of Bethlehem. Hear the angel's announcement and travel with the shepherds. And though the text doesn't actually say angels, I'm sure the angels tagged along. And even with Brooks through the streets of Bethlehem to proclaim the holy birth of Christ, who was born of Mary. We too can meekly pray, O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. May the peace of God which passes human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.